Well, good morning, everybody. It's good to be here. Good to see you here. I'm sorry I'm a few minutes late, but I got tied up. Well, before I begin, is there anyone here who has any burning questions from yesterday's time together? Anything that you'd like to talk about before we move on from yesterday? Okay. Also, before we move on to yesterday, I'd like to uh, to bring some clarity to a couple of things from yesterday's meetings and First of all, we talked yesterday, me and uh, Dinka talked yesterday about Buddhism and about her experience with Vipassana, Theravada Buddhism and Vipassana, the Vipassana practice. And um, I just want to, to uh, be clear that with regard to this whole question of my relationship to the spiritual teachings, the relationship of what I do and say to the spiritual teachings, that really um, there's little chance of confusing what I say with Buddhism. So that Buddhism is not part of the whole realm, the whole cloud of spiritual aspiration that I seek to distinguish myself from. Buddhism is, uh, is, is very different. It's a very strange phenomenon, the rise of Buddhism in the world. The Buddha himself lived a long time ago, a long time ago, 2,500 years ago. And nothing about him was ever written down until 500 years after his death. That would mean that, that uh, like if it, was, if it was now that things were being written about the Buddha, they would be writing about somebody who lived in the 17th century, in the 1600s, to give you a sense of how distant in time the actual work of the Buddha and the writing down of it. Now, what was written down, there certainly was an oral tradition and a, and a, um, a quite well-developed method of transmitting this oral tradition over the centuries between the death of the Buddha and the final writing and the beginning of writing down the stuff about the Buddha and about the Buddha's teaching. So one can assume that the writings and the stuff that we receive about Buddhism today are more, you know, pretty, pretty okay. About, about the same level of veracity as the stuff we read about Christ, who also wasn't written about, not for 500 years, but for uh, quite a long time after his death. And Buddhism has, has, uh, is huge. And it is like, a, it contains a vast variety of sometimes seemingly contradictory tenets and practices and, and uh, uh, ways of looking at things. The Buddhism that I am familiar with is, is the Buddhism from Tibet, primarily, and by extension some of the other offshoots that have, have, uh, have some relationship to the Tibetan Buddhists. And my experience of Buddhism, you see, when we get into the Advaita Vedanta area, we have, um, well, the, when, I was, when I was a young, when I was a young uh, rock and roller and so forth, there was a band called Steppenwolf. And you get, some of you might be familiar with Steppenwolf. And there was a song that Steppenwolf had in which the the uh, singer is singing of a 
of the, the, the problems, the kind of metaphysical and philosophical problems of some young girl. And he laments the fact that she's looking for a solution and all she gets is something like this. I don't know where we come from. I don't know where we're going to. And if this, all this should have a reason, we would be the last to know. And that's Advaita Vedanta. Okay? That's, the, that's my sense of Advaita Vedanta and its role in the spiritual world. We don't know anything. We will never know anything. There's absolutely nothing we can do. So do the best you can. Now that's the, the core message that I hear from it, although of course it is, it is much more developed and more uh, flowered than that. It has a lot more depth and detail and, and things to, to attract our attention and to call us to it. Buddhism, on the other hand, is very practical. My, my sense of Buddhism, and I have to say that my first kind of love affair with the uh, ancient wisdom teachings came from my first contact with Tibetan Buddhism through the people who came to the prison from Naropa Institute in Boulder, which is where Trungpa Rinpoche, which is the, the, the organization founded by Trungpa Rinpoche, who I also have great regard for. I, I know he's very, he's a strange and wacky character, but I have great regard for him for his insistence on sticking to the practical, his insistence on sticking to the point, and his, his, um, like once he was, went into, once he was in a hall, maybe more than once, once he was in a hall in a meeting with a great number of people, and he started, began by saying, everyone who has no spiritual, you know, experience with spiritual practice at all, please raise your hand. And a number of people raised their hands. And he said, I advise that you leave the room immediately. Don't go here. My experience with Buddhism, the Mahayana Buddhism and Vajrayana Buddhism, to, to a certain extent, is that it promises very little. It gives you a lot of tools for working with your mind and promises very little in the way of the possibility of you actually attaining the goal of all of this practice. And the, the things that have to be done in order for you even to approach that are extremely rigorous and difficult and practical in nature. So I have a different feel Buddhism is not part of the I don't know where we came from, I don't know where we're going to, I don't know anything, and, and so forth and so on. So when I talk about that, I'm not talking about Buddhism. I'm not. Buddhism is also wild. It has some of the weirdest, uh, something you would never expect to come from, things that you would never expect to come from the basic tenets of Buddhism, you know, religious things and things of that nature. The Tibetans call it a, a non-deistic religion, which is interesting. So there, I, I hope that, uh, I, I don't want to leave the, the impression that, the, a wrong impression about my, my, my view of Buddhism. Another thing that I wanted to say something about briefly is that last night in the small group meeting, someone brought to my attention or, or suggested to me that speaking about the, uh, the, the moment of terror and the contraction, that I use the word mistake. And that that word is uh, perhaps a little bit off-putting to people. You know, like, I didn't make a mistake. What do you mean I made a mistake? And that's not the first time, actually, that I've used that word in that connection and been called on it and suggested to me that maybe I should find some better way 
of speaking about that because people will have difficulty hearing it. Just, you know, there's a certain... Uh, you, can, you can follow that. I don't need to carry that on. The actual fact of the matter is, and, and uh, uh, I have spoken about this before, the actual fact of what I see to be the case about the, the, the appearance of this disease entity, this, this uh, hatred of life and fear of life and so forth, is that this appearance of this vivid, sharp self-consciousness in the human creature is to me clearly an evolutionary event. It's something that wasn't before and now is and is something that has come to pass as a result of the normal forces of evolution within, within consciousness. So that, and it's also very clear to me that that moment of terror and that moment of contraction from life, that moment of pulling back from life, is inevitable. It's just the case. There's no way possible that anyone can avoid that. It is just the case. If they wake you from a, a deep sleep, having put you in a bag or something, and throw you in a, 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 a the ocean surf, you are going to contract and be scared. There's nothing whatsoever you can do about that. And the moment of the birth of self-consciousness is, is infinitely more terrible and terrifying than, than that. So, that, that is what I see to be the case. And I don't think that anybody has made a mistake. I just tend to be a little loose with my vocabulary from time to time. Okay? We couldn't help it. Really. But now we can. Now we can do something about it. Now we can do something to bring an end to the, the symptoms and the effects of that first moment of of inevitable shrinking from the wildness of life. Then we couldn't. Now we can. Okay. I want to try to talk a little bit this morning about something that I really haven't talked about in any detail, I don't think anywhere. And in fact, I have given very little thought to, to tell you the truth. But uh, it's something that is a, that seems to me to be um, something that needs to be explored. I want to talk a little bit about personality. I want to talk a little bit about like a, what I speak of as the apparatus of protection and, uh, and, and opportunity that has developed and come into being and evolved over time in our lives, this, this persona. This is really hard. This is really hard to speak about because in, in a way that is not the case in pretty much anything else, we have uh, an abiding and very powerful identification with our persona. Now that's not identification in a spiritual sense, like a bad thing, it's just the case that we have a powerful binding identification with our personality, our persona. I, do, I prefer the word persona mostly because when I was a teenager, the word personality had a whole different uh, charge to it, and you either had it or you didn't, and if you had it, you were cool, and if you didn't have it, you were, you weren't. And I didn't have it, by the way. <laughs> but they're both pretty much synonymous, except in context. They are both pretty much synonymous. Persona. Persona is a little, a little more accurate because it implies a kind of a mask 
kind of a, uh, a mask that is put for but that is in the facing the world, and that the world sees as you these characteristics and traits and behavioral habits and things of that nature. <clears throat> Everything we have done, and I, I think, maybe. When I, like when I say something like everything we have ever done, I don't really know that that's the case, okay? Because of all the billions of us that exist now and all the billions of us that have existed until now, obviously I cannot, I don't have a big enough sample of my own experience to be able to say everyone, but I say it anyway because it's close to the truth. Everything we have done in the course of these thousands of years of trying to solve what seems to be the unsolvable problem of being human. You know, in the end, what we kind of resort to is just just hope and fear and hoping everything turns out for the best. And usually we will end up, we as a, as a species, will end up maybe in religion or anti-religion as the final resting place for our hopes and dreams and and uh, expectations about uh, life and it, what it's going to give us and what it's not going to give us. And it's, it's easy to say why that would be the case. Religion is a fixed and settled matter. And, uh, and nobody requires you in a religion to know anything about what it is that you believe. You can just believe and rest there. But the personality, and, and the thing about personality, the thing about persona, is that we are deeply, deeply identified with it. It is very difficult for us to see around it because it is that by means of which we see it all. It is the, that apparatus of reception and transmission that gives us the capacity to see and form, uh, form a sense of the world and a sense of relationships and, and all of that. So it's very, very difficult to talk about it as if it were some object other than me. But it is, in fact, an object other than me. <coughs> Whenever we Whenever we want to, uh, to find a, a solution to the problem of being human, that automatically translates into a solution for the problems that constitute our persona. Our persona is everything whatsoever. That is, uh, that, that is this, this life, this mind. Everything that is the, the interface between this life and the world this mind and the world, the whole show. So here we are, the only instrument we have by means of which that we can interact with the world and with each other are these personas, these masks, this apparatus that has, uh, has come into being to represent us in the outward world and to, to uh, be the the uh, subject and the the uh, uh, the subject and the object that we that receives all the the um, clues as to whether we're doing good or bad, whether we're on the right track or the wrong track, and then it's within this that we try to change the object of our personality in order to be more less uh, less painful and less conflicted and less complicated and less crazy, really. So most self-help work, and this goes back to the very beginning of our efforts to solve the problem of being human. All of our work in that regard has been work that concentrates on doing something to change our personality, to change our mind. Mind is synonymous with personality in this conversation. 
everything whatsoever that we have sought to do, we have sought to do to our personality. That now our personality includes our body, includes the whole thing, the whole package that is me to the world, to the out, to the world that's looking at me, and much of which is me to me, as I look outward and have to wrestle and struggle with the, the complicated fact that this persona seems to be me, but there's so much about it that I despise and wish I could change or wish I could get something other than. So we, we, when we finally come to the point, you know, most of our lives, our young lives, I think, not, all, not entirely, but as children, and as, as children, we are pretty much uh, unconscious, in a, in a sense. As teenagers, you know, we go crazy. And, and there's not much that's going to happen to us as teenagers, we go crazy. But even in that period, what we see to be the case is that our personality, which we don't call our personality, we call it me, but that our personality has to have something done to it to make it more fruitful or less conflicted or less crazy or less stupid or more uh, effective in serving me, getting me what I want. And we are, you know, unevenly successful in doing things to uh, change the way we look at things, to change our points of view, to change the way we react to incoming stimulus and so forth. That's all part of the personality. It is deeply, deeply ingrained in us that the problem occurs, the problem with me, I mean, one of the one of the tactics that we've found to be quite effective, however, is to project what is what I know to be me, my problem, my stupidity on the outside world. That's something we do with great facility. We've learned how to do that really, really well. But other than the things that we find we are capable of projecting onto the outside world, other than those things, the only things that remain that that are to the to the uh, to the eye that are um, eligible for being transformed or reformed or transcended or fixed is the elements of our personality. There's no possibility within us to see apart from that. We see through that, you see. That's our point of view. And as I have said, it is impossible to evaluate the validity of a point of view from within that point of view. It's just obviously impossible. You, we can evaluate the validity of the reason that I feel the way I do about this or that, we can evaluate the, all those things, the particular characteristics and, and habitual behavior patterns and relationship patterns. We can, we can do those things and evaluate them and determine that, oh, this is the problem that I have to fix. But to evaluate the entirety of the, of the universe that is us, the point of view that is us, is impossible within that point of view. Just can't be done. But we're very good at picking out the, the uh, particular aspects of our personality, of our persona, of our face, that, that are problematic and that we would really like to get rid of and we would really like to change and would really like to do away with, and the parts of our personality that seem to be vacant and requiring something else to occur and come into being as part of, of me part of this persona, part of this, this me character. We're really good at criticizing ourselves when we really get down to it. We're really good at self-hatred when we really get down to it. And of course that self-hatred is hatred of this persona. It's not really self-hatred, but we are so 
ensconced within the identification with the persona that it's self-hatred because that's me. There's no way to overstate the, 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 uh, the immersion in the persona and its com completeness. It is impossible to break out of. It really is. It's possible from time to time to, uh, to create and to maintain altered states of consciousness, but that's part of our persona too. And we can yearn for them to come back or we can wish they had never appeared, but they are, they are taken in and incorporated within, in our memories and in our relationship with them, they're incorporated in these personality, this persona. It's just the nature of things. It's just the case. It's like that first moment of terror about which we ha can do nothing. Similarly, this development of our persona is also beyond our control to do much of anything about except hate it or love it, resist it or cling to it. And of course, those movements themselves are part of our persona, the clinging and the resistance. And it's this, this um, Velcro-like nature of the persona, the fact that it is stuck like glue to our identity, that creates the, the theory that the problem is identification that what I have to do is rid myself of the identification with this ego creature. And that leads us to all kinds of false trails that seem true. But they're only true, they only seem true because we are so convinced that what needs to change is something about the way I look at things. I have to, it's part of the persona to arrive at the conclusion that I have to divest myself of my attachment to my persona. It's an idea that appears within this universe of personality, of character. Character is another word for it. It's a character that is created and scripted and and uh, related to and dealt with like any other character in any other production of uh, a drama, such as a human life. Now, when you see how, how firmly stuck we are in every place we turn to this persona, then you can begin to see how how it is that, first of all, that we would come to the conclusion that it's that that has to be done away with, that, that stickiness, that identification with the persona. And also you can see how actually impossible it is to do much of anything by concentrating on what needs to be changed about me, about this personality, about this character, that is so in, inseparable from my subjective experience of me, or anything else for that matter. But the the I and and I'm I, please forgive me if you take offense at this, but. The, the effort to divest oneself of the, the strong, forceful attachment to persona cannot succeed. If it succeeds, all that's happened is a new persona has been formed to take its place. It can't succeed. If it succeeds in the kind of profound and fundamental way that we seek to have happen, then there will be no human being here. 
which means there will be no interaction, there will be no conversation, there will be no, no uh, involvement and entanglement at all in the wild wonder that is this parade of phenomena that is the world. The, the destruction of the persona leads us right back to the deep sleep from which we awakened at the birth of self-consciousness. And that may happen, I suppose. I've heard stories of people being in samadhi for ever. And I can't obviously have a direct experience of the subjective nature of that, but that probably is because there is no subjective experience in that. None. The only means whereby we interact with the world, the only means by, with, by means of which we interact with all of reality and, and unreality is through these faces, through these characters that naturally form and come into being and evolve and change and move according to the normal laws of cause and effect of the universe. So it's that that I'm talking about when I say that, uh, that nothing whatsoever about your personality, about the character that you have, that has developed as your face, there's nothing whatsoever about that that can or needs to be changed. That's not the problem. The persona is uh, a, a creature, a, a um, phenomenon that has arisen naturally and inevitably and has taken its form and shape naturally and inevitably automatically by the, the normal uh, give and take and, and uh, flow of interaction with what seems to be the outside world. We haven't formed it. There are some things we can do from time to time to take on new char personal characteristics or to kind of shift and change old personal characteristics, but none of that fixes the problem because nothing that occurs within the personality is a problem. It is all symptoms, all effect, all effect, no cause. It's also obvious why we would think that, and, and not even think, even if, we come, even if we hear something that says that, oh, you, that's not what it, you think it is, and even if we believe that to be the case, it's easy to see why we cannot possibly <laughs> conceive of anything we can do to help ourselves or save ourselves other than to do something about this character, this persona to get rid of its negative aspects, to stop it from resisting, to make it stop clinging, to open it up, to make it uh, see. Can't, it, can't you see that there's nothing here to harm you? Can't you see that, uh, that you are closing yourself off to everything that's good and, and, and wild and wonderful about life? Well, no, you can't. You can't. Can't you open up? Can't you stop resisting? No, you can't. Not in the fundamental and profound way that would be required for you to be finished with this foolish idea that this life is out to get you and that this, this life is going to swallow you up and that you're in danger and, and being tricked and, and uh, trapped in this wild horror show of thoughts that you don't know where they come from and desires you don't know where they come from and aversions you don't know where they come from but fears 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 and it is it is that it is the 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 force of personality if I can steal a phrase 
in a different context, in a different meaning, actually. But it is the, the force of personality that makes our efforts to save ourselves by doing something about our personality so useless, really. You know, there's some things we can do, right? We can, there, 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 are, there are programs and practices and things that can ameliorate and, and bend a little bit the natural self-destructive uh, uh, forces that arise in some personas. But there's no way by trying to fix the character that you actually can free yourself of the fundamental issue, which is the, the fear of life. The actual fear of life. We call it the fear of death sometimes, but it's the fear of life. The fear of death is the fear of life, really. It's life that's going to be snatched away from us, or so we think. And although I am not all that, I, I, as I said when I began, I, I have not really spoken about this in any detail ever before, because it just seemed too slippery to me, and I, I kind of had the wishful thinking hope that I could just skip over that part and somehow get people to do the looking and everything would turn out right. And in fact, that's been the case a lot. But I think it's helpful to see how powerful the attraction of our persona is and how absolutely impossible it is to solve the fundamental problem of human being, of being human, by work on the persona. It doesn't mean that work on the persona should be abandoned. It doesn't mean that it is of no use whatsoever. There are some useful things that come out of it. But the fundamental problem that causes us to, to be absolutely certain that there's something still missing, there's something still wrong, there's something that I still don't get and never will get, that fundamental problem cannot be solved by anything done with your character with your life, with the way you think about things, with your reactions to things, with your inclination to resistance and your inclination to clinging. Even if you were able to pick out all of the aspects of your personality that were negative and, and somehow transform them or transcend them, the problem would still remain. That's what I'm saying. If you took all the bad things away, the problem would still remain. If you took all of your own stupidity away, the problem would still remain. And this, this business of looking somehow bypasses that. It gets to the heart of the matter. It doesn't promise much, you see, like Buddhism, in my experience. It doesn't promise much. It doesn't promise that everything about your personality is going to be cleared up because you look at yourself. It doesn't promise that all of your confusion and stupidity will depart because you look at yourself. It doesn't promise that you will become young and, and beautiful and... Uh, and uh, the, the toast of the town because you look at yourself. It doesn't promise you even that you will be, you will be equanimous and settled because you look at yourself. These are all aspects of the persona. These are all characteristics of this character that has served as our face in the world has served as a, a stand-in for me. A stunt double. <laughs> but it does promise that it will rid you of the fear of life. It will take that away. 
it'll rid you of the antagonistic relationship that now constitutes the main part of your relationship with your life. I'm not saying you in particular anywhere. Everybody, all of us. Because, I think, it actually does bypass the whole personal apparatus. It has no interest in the whole personal apparatus. Its interest in the personal apparatus is how to get through it to the source of it, which is me. How to, how to decline to attend to all the things for just a, just a second, just a, a moment, decline to attend to all of the things that call our attention and as threats or promises, because that's what attention does. It tries to identify threats and promises. Just for a second, for a tenth of a second, to ignore, to decline to attend to all of that, for just a hair's breadth. And see if there is not something behind all of that that is actually, because you know, your persona doesn't feel like you, does it? I mean, really, it doesn't feel like you. If you really look at it, it feels like what it is, a character that's in constant change and motion and so forth. There's no place within the persona that you can rest your attention and say, that's me. If you rest your attention on any aspect of the persona and say, that's me, all these other aspects are going to be crying out, well, wait a minute, what about me? What about me? But you, as you well know, are a singularity. There are no parts to you. And you know that. So this possibility of bringing the beam of your attention, which itself is part of that same apparatus of acquisition and, and resistance and, and fearfulness and anxiety, if you will, bring that beam of attention looking to get the slightest direct taste, contact, sniff, however whatever uh, verb you want to use, of you, that this that is uniquely and unmistakably you. Everything changes. Everything changes. Sometimes <clears throat> and the reason everything changes, I think, is be because of the fact that the, the whole show, the entire show, which is this character, this persona, this face that I wear, it's a four multi-dimensional face, but this face that I wear, is loses the ground upon which it stands and has its being and which informs it as to what should be and what should not be. What I need to do and what I should not do. It loses that the ground that it rests on which is this murmur of fearfulness and anxiety. And when it loses the ground that it rests on since it is entirely a creature caused by the by impersonal and mindless forces of cause and effect, it changes. The causes change, and it changes without doing anything about it. The stuff that is stupid, the stuff that is self-destructive, the self that leads, the stuff that leads nowhere but into more uh, pain and misery and suffering. That kind of stuff just starts disappearing. Not all at once, but starts disappearing. The whole, the whole power.
powerful connection between me and the persona in which while I am suffering and fearful and miserable, there seems to be no, no place where it stops and I begin. That goes away. But it's really, very really interesting because when it goes away, it goes away by actually erasing the distance between you and the character that represents you, the life that represents you. Now I'm sure I am sure that this time that I've spent talking about this has probably caused more confusion than clarification, at least in some. But maybe not. I hope not. My purpose in talking about this is to provide a, a basis for seeing that the, that the primary the primary possibility available to all of us to end this headlong rush toward the cliff is actually accessible and doable by you. But not as one more thing that you take on to fix your personality, to fix your character. If you do it with that intent, you will fail. If you do it with the intent of finding peace, you will fail. If you do it with the intent of finding satisfaction and fulfillment in life, you will fail. For the reasons that I have tried to outline, all of those things are done in order to do something about this character. If you do it for no purpose other than to do it, to get the taste of what it is to be you, if you do it for that purpose, intent is everything, it seems. If you do it for that purpose, just to get there, and even if you are motivated by the expectation that, against all odds, this actually might do some good, if you do it with the intent of just looking, Nothing more than that. Just looking, getting that glimpse, whatever comes of it. You can't fail. You can't. It's impossible to fail. And also, I talk about it because <coughs> When you embark upon this, you can expect, well, you just don't know what to expect. But it's quite possible that the, the entry into this work, into this simple idea of getting a glimpse of what it feels like to be you, will drive the persona crazy for a while. And I want you to know that has nothing to do with you. This personality, when that foundation of anxiety and alienation from life vanishes, it doesn't have, literally doesn't have a leg to stand on. And what that means is it might get wobbly. <clears throat> and all kinds of crazy thoughts come, and all kinds of crazy ideas. Might not. It did for me, but you know, I'm, I'm kind of a hard case. It has for some, but not for all. But don't be surprised if that happens. And don't, and, and, and the, the, and here's the, here's the funny thing about it. <coughs> I can tell you this, right? And maybe it'll do some good. Maybe the moment will come when, when you say, Oh man, oh God, why did I ever get involved in this? This is so stupid. And it'll dawn on you that maybe that's just a, you know, kind of a, a, a me jerk. 
reaction to the destruction of the ground of foundation for your personality. And it'll make it easier on you. You could say, oh, that's just, that's not. But here's the thing, <clears throat> and one of the reasons that I have not talked about these matters, any of these matters before, including my relationship with the Advaita Vedanta community, here's the thing. If I can get you to look at yourself, it may very well usher in a period of, of confusion and you know, craziness and, and uh, even self-hatred and self denial and all kinds of crazy stuff. It may well. But what I know is that that stuff there is not going to hurt you. And that the, the, the uh, experiences and phenomena that arise within the course of recovery from this disease, there are just experiences and phenomena that arise within the course of recovery of this disease, and they will pass away and be left behind so you don't even remember that they occurred. I have a very difficult time remembering things back from when I began this course that I know at the time seemed to be just vitally, vitally important and, and, and terrible and I can't even remember them. Can't even, you know, it's like, can't even remember them. And even the aspects of this persona, like I talked a little bit yesterday about, what, maybe it was in the small group, about a wonderful person I am now, <laughs> compared to the person I was before. Right. <laughs> and nothing whatsoever that happens in the recovery from this disease. No thoughts that come to you, no uh, no opinions about the nature of what you're doing that come to you, nothing whatsoever will stop the course. Once you look, the end is certain. Once you succeed, the end is certain. And I know that. I am, it's as plain to me as the nose on my face, which of course I can't see. <laughs> <coughs> So that's the reason I haven't spoken about it, because it's a really hard thing to speak about. It's a hard thing to speak about my relation with the spiritual teachings. It's a hard thing to speak about that. I'm sure that when this video gets out, there'll be considerable uh, reaction to it. And it's hard to speak about this whole business of persona. It's hard for me even to be able to find a way to talk about it in a coherent fashion that might be useful to the people that listen to me. So it's that, the lazy, that general laziness that is my chief characteristic that has kept me from talking about these things. But also, because, and I could excuse it, because it really doesn't matter. It really doesn't. All that matters is that you look. That's it. The rest of it is all, I do these things because I hope I am helpful because I provide some, maybe provide some kind of comfort or some kind of uh, encouragement in hard times. But you don't even need that. You might curl up in a ball, weeping and wailing, and it won't hurt you. It will not hurt you. The end is sure. The looking cures this problem. And the persona that results, because you can't get rid of it. The only way you can get rid of a personality is to die. That's pretty much it. That's the whole, if you die, the personality goes. That's what actually dies. But, but so you're stuck with it. You have to have a personality. There, there's no way out. You have to have, the, if you're, as long as you're a human being, you will have a sense of self-consciousness, of self-awareness, which some call ego. You're stuck with that. And it's, in my view, a feature, not a bug. But the personality that, that 
that is the result of kind of morphing and falling away and and just changing the way it interacts with the world is always better than the one you left behind. Or at least I am better than the one I left behind. And I promise you that. <laughs> okay, that's it. That's all I'm going to say. I'm, I'm, I hope I didn't confuse you too badly, but I'm happy to talk to anybody who is confused or not confused. Yes. <coughs> Hi. Hi, John. What's your name again? I'm Judd. Judd. Right. Judd. I uh, first came uh, across you about two and a half years ago. A friend of mine had uh, sent me the, the CDs of the 2007 uh -huh. uh, retreat here. Yeah, that uh, 2007 retreat marked a turning point. Certainly did for, really, for me. Yeah. Well, for me too, for this work. Yeah. I, was, uh, I was really sick <clears throat> at the time that I uh, got this package. And frankly, I didn't pay much attention to it. I thought, well, it's just more junk. Yeah. All my life, I'd been on this road of trying to, you know, find a way to fix fix myself. I would call myself a radical or pretty much an extremist. To you know, everything we've talked about, all the religions, all the, whatever whatever way I could possibly go, I did and found nothing. Nothing. Yeah, <laughs> me too. So uh, I had uh, anyway. I was sick. I couldn't do anything. I was lying in bed, but I had a video player, so I stuck one in. I think it was about eight at night. I watched it, and then I stuck another one in. And I watched that, and by that time I was I was done. I was cooked. <laughs> <laughs> and. Uh, I woke up the following day. I said, I, I think I'd like to take a look at the rest of these. So I did. And I spent the entire day, I did the whole retreat in one day. Hmm. And then something began to occur. It was like I couldn't remember a thing you said. Hmm. <laughs> but I knew there was something there. There was something there that spoke to something inside of here. So I stuck it on again, started on number one. And I did the whole retreat in another day. Wow. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> well, actually, it was great. I got to know some of the people that are actually here today yeah. uh, on a very intimate basis. And I can even tell you their stories point blank, pretty much. <laughs> well, I think it was pretty much on the third day that uh, it became very clear to me that there was no spiritual solution. Ah. Completely. Wow, gone. that retreat was good. <laughs> I went to my uh, I went to my my bookshelf, which was loaded with tons of spiritual stuff that I poured over for all these years, and I just emptied them out and gave them away. You know? hmm. But I felt I remember feeling kind of bereft and lost. Uh, there was something here, but I hadn't gotten it yet. <laughs> so I went back and. Like I said, I was really sick. I could, I had, I think I had dengue fever or something. I could barely go from the kitchen to the bathroom to the bedroom. So it was, it was great. It's like being in jail, right? Yeah. <laughs> in the hole. So I watched. I think I watched. I don't know how many times. You know, it just went on for weeks, hmm. actually. Wow. And uh, finally, I was in the kitchen, and I remember I was washing some dishes. I was turned around to put. I was, had a rag in my hand, I was washing a glass, and there was this moment. You know, I, you know, I can't describe it, I can't tell you anything other than there was this moment. And then uh, I just started to take the medicine and began to try with, with an intensity that was part of my persona mm -hmm. and my history to do what you recommended. 
and it became kind of a, a natural thing, even though I didn't notice that anything was happening in my life. I was, frankly, I was terrified. I was pretty much at the end of my rope. I, conditions were pretty, pretty bad, pretty rough. And then, I don't know, things just started. The bottom line was this, after this two and a half year period, I look back on that now and it's like you say, I can remember it, but I can't feel it. Right, I, can't, I don't have any connection with yeah, it. Yeah. No, it's just not there. And uh, I don't know, the fear in my life just, and I, believe me, I had lots of things to be afraid of. In, rea in the so-called reality, yeah. seemingly, yeah. and I was, I was, I was terrified of my life. And now I'm not. You know? Ah. <laughs> 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 you know, I'm just, I'm just not. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm just so some. This whole spiritual thing that I had attempted to. Uh, gain something from this entire life that I've lived. I just can't tell you how happy I am. You just said, you know, forget about it. <laughs> <laughs> I know the feeling. There's, there's something else you can. It was when I first heard you. There was there was something that said, okay, there's that actually something I can do. Hmm. Everything else was well, just you know, you know, get quiet, meditate, lay down, you know, do your postures. What I mean, whatever it was you were supposed to do, but there was no kind of an end result or a promise right. of uh, getting rid of the self-hatred and fear and resentment and anger, blah, 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 whatever it is. And then, really glad you spoke of the persona and the personality today because sometime along the way, I looked, went to the bathroom, I looked in the mirror and I saw this face and I knew that all these years I had carried around this picture of myself in my mind I think I was around 35 years old, you know, that's what I was, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, I had a good look and it was, he just wasn't there. <laughs> 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 you know, just uh, did not exist in this space and time. That, so that identification started to dissolve. And I noticed with the with the dissolving of the fear, the anger, the resentment, the rage, also, and also the ecstasy and the enjoyment. That's right. That's uh, all, all in the same. Began to fade. Yeah. And there, a new type of enjoyment of life began to show up. You know, I can't really describe that. As I well. can't describe <laughs> it. That's why. That's why I really try not to try. Yeah. It's just life. Yeah. You know, it's life. Yeah, on the way here, I, I, uh, the conditions with which I got here are kind of, well, amazing to me, but I, I did. But uh, I landed in the LAX and nobody was there to meet me. Oh, oh poor me. <laughs> <laughs> and there was nobody to call, and, but uh, there was a bus. and This is really cute, I, I thought. I, I, I was wandering in a lot, and, was, and I saw a bus driver, big black guy, 6'5", kind of skinny, kind of uh, not, nice smile on his face, and I said, can you tell me where, you know, where to get where I'm going? He said, yeah, you just take the 60, and, and uh, you can have a day pass for 680, or, you know, you can have a senior pass for uh, $1.80. And I said, well, how old do you got to be to be... Uh, get a senior pass, and he says, "Well, how old do you want to be?" <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that, that was the start of my bus adventure. It was very cool. <laughs> uh, yeah, so it, it ended up kind of being that way. And along the way, I was uh, in the past. You you spoke about even being here in Ojai and looking at the people as you pass through the streets and saying, oh, that's me. Yeah. That, that happiness or that sadness or that smirk or that dismay, all me. That's right. It's, it's really quite amazing that what you refer to here is something that is a common experience for me now. 
and uh, and it's it is uh, astonishing. It you know, I, and I rarely speak about things like this because, oh God, I don't want to get into some spiritual. <laughs> <clears throat> but the truth is that when I see somebody, it's very plain to me that their experience of being is the same as mine. It's identical. It's very clear to me that I'm looking at the same force of personality, the same ground of being. It's, uh, it's, it's undeniable, it's self-evident, it speaks for itself, and it's not what we imagine. It's uh, I see somebody walking along, you know, kind of grouchy, like an old man, kind of grouchy, and and obviously kind of, you know, old, us old geezers, we have a tendency to get uh, antisocial a little bit, you know, like, ar, ar, ar. don't tell me. <coughs> but, but I'll see the expressions on their face, and I'll see that they have no, there's nothing to them at all that what's behind that expression is the same exact reality that's behind me, that is me. And that's clear. Anyway. Well, it had to be something outside the box to get out of this. Like you say, you can't see it within it. Can't see it within it, no, can't. So, for me, the looking is outside the box somewhere. Mm. It is. Yeah. And, uh, That's the point of it. Yeah. It's, it's, uh, you can't get here from within working on the character, the personality. It's, you just can't do it. It's so obvious and clear to me now. It's yeah. just, it is self-evident. It's, it's like, said. wow, how can I have missed that? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you, you talk about uh, there's one consciousness, one human consciousness. And this is, I don't know if it's a perplexity or n not really, but uh, if there is just one, if that is the case, then I'm here alone. And I just made you up so I can see myself. That's true. You see, I, I really, it's, it's, it's my sense that, uh, that all of reality is, that is, reality has within it a need for seers. I don't know how else to say it. They're, 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 in fact, I was joking last night. I, I don't even know if I should say this, lest it... <laughs> but I was, I was joking with Carla last night. I have, I, I'm, I have some interest in, uh, in cosmology and things of that nature. It's a very fascinating uh, uh, field of uh, investigation uh, without regard to what is investigated. And it turns out that we have a pretty good story about the origins of the universe and a pretty good story that explains most of the things that characterize the universe now, most of them. And, you know, some of the parts of the story are a little bit wild, like Inflation, which in which everything expanded faster than the speed of light, but that's a requirement. And they have all these things figured out, right? Except for one thing, and that is that the the universe seems to be moving faster than it can be accounted for by all the other theoretical conclusions that have been reached. And what they've done is they have assigned, they have decided that they will call whatever it is that's causing that to occur dark energy. Now, that term dark energy is just a term, it could just be, I don't know. Right? That's all there is to it. It's just, we don't know, we're going to call it dark energy because that's something we can call it. It occurred to me last night, and I was joking with Carl about it, that this obvious, self-evident need on the part of reality, a requirement on the part of reality to produce seers, might be that dark energy. It's so huge, it is so irresistible, it is so 
this production of seers, the production of creatures and things that can see, that can experience, that can receive, is so powerful. It's irresistible. And it's my sense, we forget about the dark energy, that's just a little... It's my sense that it is that that drives the... Uh, the it is that that has produced life, that requirement within reality that it be seen, and it's that that has produced consciousness, although it may be actually identical with consciousness, and it's that that has produced a, 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 a graduated development of the vivid sense of self-awareness, which has reached a the highest level on this planet with us, with these creatures. And, and I see that to be entirely, that to be the force of evolution, that requirement within reality that it be seen. And that, and that requirement produces seers. And the more aware of themselves the seers are, the more effective they are at meeting that requirement within reality to be seen. Now all of that is beside the point. It's just, you know, like kind of a f useless speculation on the part of this character here that has no real value or, or, uh, or help to anybody who's trapped within a, uh, the feeling trapped within a life and without possibility of escape. But, it's, but it is nevertheless the case, I think. That, uh, <clears throat> if I have one burning desire now in this, it's kind of, it would be that, to touch you. Hmm. Or, or to touch me at first, yeah. and then to touch you. Yeah. And that all I want to do is see you and, and have you see me. Yes, that's right. It's like, in my experience of life or people that we are like ships passing in the night. This yeah. persona is so powerful that we just kind of barely glance. And so driven by fear. Right. All we want is we want to say, okay, that, that's probably okay, that's, pro that's probably not going to hurt me, that's probably okay, that probably doesn't have anything for me, okay, that, no, I don't want that. I, no. Oh, wait a minute, what about that? Is that going to get me? Wow, right. I better do something about that. Or, wait a minute, what about that? Is that going to save me? I better do something about that. But most of the time we spend just, no, no, not that, not that, not that. Netty, netty, in a sense. <laughs> <laughs> it's a pleasure to talk to you. Thank you, John. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Great. And I just want to say one more thing, and that is that that desire, that, that the commonality of the, of the human of human being, the commonality of human being, is the source of the irresistible desire to end misery in the entire human creature. And it's not out of some, you know, like highfalutin, uh, self-denying uh, uh, love of love of one's neighbors or anything of that kind, although I love many people, and it's, it's uh, self-interest. Because the, when the personal apparatus that has protected you from all of the craziness around you, as well as your own craziness, when that begins to dissipate and disappear, then you feel it all. All the craziness, all the stupidity. And that's why many people who have stumbled upon this in the past and, and have uh, run away, went to the hills. And you know, you hear stories of uh, ancient sages climbing up in trees and throwing rocks at people to try to come and get some, something for them. And, and I can see why. It's, uh, it is excruciating, really. And. Uh, but, but, but without, without uh, a threat to me, it's still excruciating. 
and uh, it's just that's what compassion is. Compassion is that commonality of misery and suffering, that inability to to block out your confusion and pain and pretend that I am on my own and I'm okay and you're not. It's not I'm okay, you're okay, I'm okay and you're not. And that just isn't doesn't isn't very possible. And most of the time Carl and I don't we, we don't socialize or anything. We don't go out in crowds and, and be around people and it's because it's more comfortable to be a little have a little bit of distance. But what would be really great is if this entire creature rid itself of this stupidity, of this this disease, this disease that is actually curable. That would be really cool. And if we don't, well, this experiment just failed, that's all. Well, at least it hasn't failed for some of us, but it has to be all of us. But uh, just one note on that. Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm compassionate by default. Yeah. You know, it's not something I especially want or, no, I like just, you say, uh, please, you know, it's like... I just... <laughs> <laughs> but it, that's true, it's there. That's just how it is. Yeah. Okay. Thanks, Thank John. you, Joe. It's been a pleasure. When I said that if we don't succeed, the experiment will fail, I didn't mean our own personal experiment, but the experiment that is the human creature, because it certainly is on the verge of catastrophic failure. And everybody seems to know that, and as always, nobody seems to be able to do anything about it. Well, this is something that can be done about it. This is something that can bring an end to human insanity, as nothing else has. This here, this simple act. Anybody else? All the way in the back. Jean? Liz. Liz, yes, Liz. I'm bad with names. Liz, did you want to talk? No, come on, I'm just... Hi, John. Hi, Liz. Good to see you again. What can I do for you? Um, I had a question about what you were speaking about, about the personality. Okay. So I wrote it down so I wouldn't forget. Okay. So you said, this character cannot be separated from the subjective expression of me. So this character cannot be separated from? The subjective experience of me. But this is the well, this character is the antenna. It is the receiver of all subjective experience. It includes the body, the brain, the the whole the whole picture. This persona is the receiver of all subjective experience. All. Okay, but um, I guess what I'm looking clar for clarity for is when I'm looking at myself, what I'm sensing or glancing at, um, is that separate from the experience of the character? Well, you see, the, this, here the word separate really kind of falls apart right. as being useful in talking about this, right? Mm -hmm. You are, you are the source of the personality. You are the source of everything that arises within this life. Mm -hmm. you, it's, it's you that are the source of it and the substance of it, mm -hmm. actually. In the same way, I'm going to go back to a metaphor that I have not found a better one to replace it with. In the same way, as you make these notes on this paper, Right. The, the notes are this pencil, right? The pencil, mm -hmm. the, the, gray, uh, the gray marks on the paper and so forth. The only way in which the, 
the content that of the this these notes can possibly be expressed is by making these black marks on this paper. If the black marks yeah, weren't on I, the paper, I, I get it. there would yeah. be no content to it. Mm -hmm. But likewise, without the white paper, there would be no content to right, it either. Right, right, right. Right? And it's, it's like that. It's different, but not. It's, uh, it's the best metaphor I've seen for the right. relationship between you and this life. I mean, we could call it the life. We don't have to call it the persona because the persona and the life are indistinguishable from one another. Right. right. I guess the only reason this question matters to me is is that I, I, I had a sense that I was looking at something um, I, don't, I can't find the right word exactly, but that is, we could say, eternal, or... Um, Eternal's a good word. Can't be touched. Um, yeah, and... I mean, the problem with eternal is that it's been co-opted. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah, that's what I mean. Yeah. But um, I guess, I guess I, it, when you said that, it gave me the sense, oh, what I'm looking at... Um, is as malleable and as um, mm, messed up, for lack of a better word, uh, as the character. Just in the sense, in the same way that the beam of attention is part of the character, okay? As you said. Mm -hmm. And so in the same way, I thought that you were saying and uh, perhaps you were, um, that what I'm looking at is also um, the character. And as you say, it is part because you can't have the one without the other. I mean... Well, actually, you can't have one without the other, but you can't have the character without you. Uh, um, you, wait, wait. you remain. Yeah, you can have you without the character, but you can't right. have the character without me. Right. right. Um, just like you can erase this piece of paper and right. the white's still there. You still have paper. No, right. I get that. I, I'm just trying to tell you why it matters to I me know. to ask I that understand. question. I'm not trying to quibble on it. I know you're not. Okay. I'm trying to, trying to have be helpful. Okay, thanks. Um, and and, and, um, and the, what, I think I understand what you're saying, all right? I think I kind of grind okay. it. And I, I'm trying to get to it. <coughs> The paper, the white paper, uh -huh. is untouched. Right. It has it has nothing on it. It's not touched, smeared, or in any way changed by the appearance of print on it. Right. 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 It's still a white paper underneath the print, even. Right. <coughs> what you're looking for, and the only difference between the print and the white paper, is that when you're reading or writing, right, mm -hmm. your attention is is strongly focused on the content that is being represented mm -hmm. by those marks on, on paper. Right, right. That's where your attention is. And you might, like if there are footnotes or something, right, mm -hmm. you might shift your attention down to the footnotes and then back up to the content and so forth. But during none of that process do you notice the white paper. You know it's there. Right. You're aware of it, but you don't notice it. <coughs> well, I don't know. It's the same with you, okay? Right. You are pristine. You are untouched. Mm -hmm. You are as plain and blank as that white paper, really. Mm -hmm. there are, you have no real characteristics except for your you-ness or me-ness, depending on, like to me it's your you-ness, but to mm -hmm. you it's your me-ness, mm -hmm. right? It's your only characteristic, and that is very so uniform and right, so right, without right, right. any uh, agitation that there's little difference between that and the paper itself. It's like the whiteness of the paper is different than the paper. Right, right, right. right. It's still a characteristic. <laughs> right. So, so you never notice any of that. You know it, you're aware of it, you can't mm -hmm. not be aware of mm -hmm. it, just like you can't not be aware of the white paper. Mm -hmm. 
the movement of looking is the attempt to bring attention just for a split second onto the white paper, which is in fact not in any way marked, blemished, wrinkled, or, or, or changed at all by anything. So I see that even when, we, when you say that, that even, I even co-opt that into, okay, so it's not this, it's not that. You know, I'm still giving it characteristics. But say, well, you can't even do that. But say no. But see, you said something early on mm -hmm. that indicated that you knew exactly because you have actually seen. Oh, I, I do. Yeah. I do. So the, and that trumps it all, right? Now yeah, right, we're talking right. about something in words that you already know directly. Right. And where the words are indirect and can't possibly contain the actuality of it. Right, right. We're talking about something that you know directly. And you can see for yourself that that, which is you, is unchanged. It's untouched. It's the same as it has always been. This is you. I Forgive me for calling it it. It's just a, a way of moving a conversation forward. It's unchanged. It's untouched. It's eternal in the the actual philosophic sense. It has no, uh, it is unchanged by time. Mm -hmm. right? It is, uh, doesn't move in time. Time comes and goes within it. And, uh, and that's you. And that right. touch, which may have been a tenth of a second, sometimes it's even less than that, and for some it's not even consciously known that the touch has occurred. So insignificant is it? But that touch, that one touch, is all it takes. Because you'll come back. You'll come back until it becomes like almost second nature. Well, my mind keeps trying to <coughs> validate what I saw. Yeah, but that, And so, that you. you know, I mean, that's okay. I know that. But at the same time, I, I go through periods of confusion where my mind can't quite get it yeah, now what was that again? Did you see that? Did you really see that? I mean, really, there was nothing there. Um, so I was just trying to like cover those bases, right. that's all, you know? But, that, but a, I want to, can I say one more that's thing? That's a very light disturbance compared to some of the disturbances <laughs> that kind of occur. No, but I want to say one more thing. One thing does keep coming up. When you say, it doesn't hurt you, doesn't touch you, my mind just goes, yeah, but when I'm hurting, when, you know, this is happening and that's happening, it is touching me, no, let me but say it, it isn't, no. it isn't, it but isn't. it is. Let me say it, let, let me say it a little differently. It doesn't, <laughs> it does not damage you. It does not make a mark on you. Now, pain persists. Mm -hmm. You know, pain is pain. Pleasure is pleasure. Confusion is confusion. Clarity is clarity. All of these things continue to alternate within this, this, this mind. I use persona, mind, life. They're all the same thing to me. The, uh, so anyway, <laughs> I don't remember where I was going with that because I don't remember where I started. But uh, it doesn't damage you. Yeah. Huh? It can't hurt you. It can't hurt you. Right. It, it can't hurt you. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, about the fact that both are happening at the same time. I mean, you're hurting and it's not damaging you. Right, because the, the, that just seems the life, impossible. The life contains pain. Right. It's just the nature of life. Just as the life contains pleasure, just as it contains confusion, just as it contains clarity, and these things are moving and changing and shifting, coming and going all the time, along with a vast array of other phenomena that are constantly uh, refreshing and moving and coming and going and passing each other and so forth and in the uh, natural unfolding of the, the of the of the life itself the mind itself now those things are just characteristics they don't they're effects they don't touch you the fact that there's pain in the life doesn't damage you. The fact that you have the experience of that pain in the life 
does not damage you. And the day comes when that is not something you know as an intellectual mm -hmm. conclusion, but when it's just the case. You, you, you see right, what I'm right. saying? I'm just trusting you on this. That's right. <laughs> you can trust me. I mean, I'm not trying, I'm not telling you to give your firstborn child. I know, I know. You know, or to do you some screwball <laughs> thing, right? I'm just asking you to look at yourself. So you can trust I me. I know, I know. And I, and I do see what's good about that is that I can't, I don't pay any attention to my mind. Looking at myself keeps me f out of trouble. <laughs> and that's the only <coughs> thing I can say. Y you know? That's good enough for now. Okay. But I tell you, it's the truth that the day will come when you, it's just the case. That pain is just life. Mm -hmm. And pleasure is just life. And confusion and clarity or any of the other negative and positive aspects of life are just life and part of the entire package and not anything that damages you or enhances you in any way. It's just what you're here to see. Mm -hmm. Just what these creatures appeared in order to be able to see. It's just that the infinite and incomprehensible variety of things that can be represented by actually just one sensation. It's all the same sensation. All of it. And that's all it is. Mm. And it'll be obvious to you. It's just the case. It doesn't mean anything. Like, oh, booga booga, that means something. It doesn't mean anything. It's just the case. And that'll become clear to you and obvious to you. All right. Okay. Glad you're here. Me too. Thank you. Okay. <clears throat> well, let me see. I, I have a hard time remembering what time we started. We started at 10, right? It's time to go then. <laughs> uh, I'll be back. It's, uh, wow. I'm really pleased to be here. I'm really grateful to you for your willingness to suffer with my kind of awkward attempts to say something something clear and uh, helpful. Okay? I'll see you uh, three o'clock. <coughs> Thank you, Carla. <laughs> What it is is that, you know, the, these meetings are, are, have an enormous uh, effect on this persona. These meetings with you really kind of kind of blow me away. So, thank you. That's my excuse for not knowing what time it is. <laughs>